Um, my name is Mikita, and um, I'm a CEO and co-founder of Quote Roller. Quote Roller is a software that helps you to automate sales, proposals, creation, and sending. Uh, almost three years ago, I was um, back in Eastern Europe, and I was running a, a web development agency. And me and uh, my co-founding partner had to create like dozens of sales proposals every month. And the process sucked. Like all the sales proposals we were creating were the same. Buy the company this, um, you know, hundred dollars for this service, two hundred dollars for this service. They look the same, we had to copy paste data between Word documents, and then when we were sending those proposals, we had no clue if those uh, sales proposals were ever opened. We didn't really know what clients were looking at. And uh, we just thought, you know, the process sucks, so we gotta, we gotta, we gotta make it better. So we built Quote Roller. We built it, um, we started yeah, to market. By the way, sorry, what was your name? Mikita. Mikita, great. Great introduction, background. So, but I'm going to have you flip cut to the chase All right. and say, what do you want help with today? If you get one question answered, and we'll get to where you are with your stage, but just let's start with like, what is the result you want from this? What do you want to learn from us? So, the first thing, um, we're in a situation um, where we got customers. Got customers. They're quite, uh, they're quite happy. And roughly how much? MRR, or AAR, or CIA, or FBI, or um, in annual we're at like seven hundred now. Seven hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah. Okay. Congratulations, by the way. So, um, so we build a product. We got a bunch of customers that use the product, um, but the problem is, uh, majority of those customers are just like me three years ago. They're web designers, freelancers agencies and that don't really create that many sales proposals on a monthly basis and uh, therefore the product features are not that like the product is not that beneficial for those guys and therefore we have a relatively high churn rate and that is the problem um, while there is a there is a small uh, percentage of those clients that we have that create like dozens of proposals per day but those are in the niche markets that are really hard to get to with, um, with inbound marketing, with, uh, with blogging, like construction people. They don't really read blogs. Um, so, okay, so you, you guys are smart, right? And uh, what I want to get is uh, <laughs> get, a, get don't, in a... Don't confuse intelligence with experience. All right, you guys are experienced, not necessarily smart. <laughs> That's... <laughs> um, yeah, so, so my question is, um, would it make more sense for us to expand the product beyond just sales proposals, or would it make more sense to change sales and marketing model? Which is probably a very broad qu uh, question, but that's, that's our challenge right now. That's what we're going through. Great. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> probably not an uncommon challenge, again, with this kind of group. Uh, well, you know, I'll ask one question and I'll give you my thoughts. What do you, what's, your, what's your organic growth rate? What, we, what will your revenue grow in the next 12 months? Even with your churn and all these other things, what's your organic growth rate? For the past 12 months, right? Well, next 12 months. Or for the next 12 months. What do you months. think it'll be? Well, we projected it to be like 400%. Yeah, that's pretty good. And <laughs> But what, what, what you, you've been doing this for, for several years, right? What do, you, Three what do you think it will actually be next year? What will you grow? I have no idea. I, you know, I was like, I was not expecting we are going to be... How about you're going to double? Does that sound about well, fair? Well, I'll tell you why I asked the qu question, right? right? So you've got a market that's basically self-service. It's very low end. Um, those markets often have very high churn rates, right? And you'd like to have a bigger company than you have. You're doing uh, 50K a month. You've been doing it for three years, you're a little tired, right? And you wished you were doing 250 a month, right? Yeah, exactly. I, 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 we all get it, right? And, and then sell to Adobe. Yeah, so, so I think what you have to do is take a pause, okay? Uh, some businesses do explode overnight, but they're usually B2C, okay? So you've got, you've got, a, real, 
you've got 50,000 in MRR. You've probably got, th you've got thousands of customers by number, right? Yeah. A couple thousand. Here's the yeah. thing to bear in mind. No one in the world has ever heard of you. There's this little niche that's kind of heard of you that use a few other tools like, you know, Pipedrive and Insightly or whatever, but no one's ever heard of you, right? So the question is, 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 is it hopeless at this stage? And I would argue if it's self-service and you're at the stage and you're growing less than 100%, it's kind of hopeless. Like not, it's not literally hopeless, but if you're growing 50%, you're just never, it's, you're never going to get there, right? If you're growing 400%, change nothing. <laughs> churn doesn't matter. Nothing, nothing matters if it's 400% net of churn, right? Where it gets interesting, in my experience, is actually you'll see a lot of self-service, and I don't know why this is, that grow, they're on the bubble around 100%. They're growing 90, 80, 100, 105, right? And that's where you have to be thoughtful, right? Um, because if you, if you tilt up market too much too quickly, you're, you're throwing away the, the, the gravy and the goose or whatever the expression is, right? So that's why I, you know, I, you can know, think about the question, but if you're growing more than 100%, I would de-stress your life a little bit and focus on making whatever's you're doing now better. And if it's below that, you've got to change things. Okay. So, I, and I'm going to chime in because I have a different or complementary approach. What I would say is a lot of this depends on how much churn you have. Because if you have a lot of churn, you can double, but then you'll end up, uh, at some point, you, as fast as you're growing, you're staying in the same place. Yeah, but hold on there. I'm going to predict his churn. We're going to do a little, oh. a little uh, seance. About 3.3 to 3.5 percent per month, or higher. I'm thinking. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah. So, so we know it's high. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty. High. So think by 5 percent a month means you have to you, every year high. you lose half of your customer base. Yeah. So if you do the math, I would suggest, and I find this is very common for companies like yours, where you have a great product, you have a bunch of these little guys. I mentioned small deals pay the bills, big deals can drive growth. Small guys can be great in B2C, but in businesses, usually they end up being, the best part about it is they got you off the ground. And you've got a product, you're learning, but they may not pay on time, well, probably get credit cards, but finances are shakier, a lot of attrition, often more difficult to maintain in terms of customer service. And, but I would look at, okay, from your customers, what 10% or 5% or 1% use it the most, and they use the high usage, there might be a team of people using it, like a corporate package, and can you pick basically a, a more of a you know, business to business, like corporate package that you can start to approach or market to companies, whether it's software companies or construction, com I don't know, whatever it is, and say, okay, we have all these little guys at 25 bucks a month, and now we can go and reach out and more profitably market to companies because when you can sell a $15,000 a year service and putting 50 salespeople on it, you, you have a lot more uh, financial leeway to do different kinds of marketing. You could do outbound, you can do inbound, I don't know, whatever. So I would look at that, which is coming up with a, I, don't call, I, would call, I wouldn't call it enterprise, but like a business package. If, I think if it fits your, there's, there's like a niche in your current customers where you see that happening already. But the niche can, is the question, right? So the, the question niche. I ask is, do you have a handful of customers that would like to buy 200 licenses? Right? Even if even, you don't have the five, right product. Even five customers five. out of 5,000 is enough yeah. to say, hey, there's something, there's something here. But if it's zero. <laughs> Forget it. Then uh, is it, do you have five that have randomly asked you for an enterprise package? 20 right? seats. Um, yeah, you that's exactly how many we got. What's that, five? Yeah. But, but, but five is maybe a lot because, I, you know, I haven't looked at the quote roller marketing page in a while, but it doesn't in any way suggest this is an enterprise grade product, does it? No, it doesn't because like 99.9% no. so .9 are small businesses and freelancers. So if you market it to them, if you just change the message a little bit, I bet you get 50. Yeah, if, right? really if you reach out, you could probably, you might have a bunch of people, individuals at companies who if you, put a little elbow grease into it, they might say, oh yeah, I've got 25 or 30 or 50 other people who might be fit for this. Maybe. This is about, okay. I mean, you might look at your, you know, 1% niche. In fact, by the afterwards, maybe Andrew here of Reiki, you guys might be similar. I don't know if you already went through this. The axima. You know him? Yeah, yeah, okay. He might know more, but I think it's, you really gotta like dig for the diamonds that are in, it's like the needle in a haystack. So it could be five customers out of 5,000. 
Right? You're just looking for these little data points. You say, wow, okay, this thing really works. I'm making money on it. And by the bigger customers, they're more stable. You can get paid cash up front. And it's a really good place to examine if you've got something there to grow. Um, okay, and since I got 15 minutes, yeah. um, <laughs> the next question. Of those five, how much time have you spent with them? Uh, Learning. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Not much. Because I'll tell you my, my story. So we started off as a, basically a self-service business. So did Salesforce. What's that? So did Salesforce. And, and I'm, you know, I'm doing like, customer support in the afternoons, and it's like five months in, and I get this uh, ticket. It says, I'd like to buy 500 seats. <laughs> well, we only have you know, regular single seat and single seat with bells and whistles, right? And she said, I'll buy them today. Right? And so actually, literally what I did is I went to Basecamp's website, I copied their form, I put it into Word, I did a search and replace, and I sent her the form on EchoSign, and we closed 500 seats that day. Right? And, and the biggest mistake I made, you know, it's probably my top 50 yeah, just or 100 do that. mistakes. No, but what I, mean, what I didn't do, what I didn't do was, was take a pause and understand why, why this woman came through cyberspace out of nowhere and asked for five, why did she take such a risk? And why did she want to buy 500 seats when we didn't even have a 500 seat edition? And I, and I got confused. I, didn't, I thought it was too niche like construction. She was in these debt consolidation services. And I did some quick math, and the, you know, there are like 50, 100 customers in this universe. So it's like, what does it mean? But what it really was just, she was just the, the, someone that managed a very large sales team with extremely high turnover, with infinite competition, that had to close a prospect on the phone in 60 seconds. And in 2006, we were the only tool that met all of those criteria, so she bought 500 seats. So I would say if you have five's a lot, five's a lot of interviews and case studies, and the yeah, next two or three, just slow down, listen, you know, promise them the version's coming, ask them what they'd want, and see if you can sell them the 500 seats or the 10 seats. Because even 10 seats versus one, especially if the churn's lower, that'll be a 30, 30x larger deal, right? So I, maybe listen to the five, next five. And, and look where, where is, the, where are you being used where they need you, not that you're a nice to have? Need. I guess, or was it vitamin? You need to be an aspirin, not a vitamin. But they, they need you. And if they didn't, if they lost you, they'd be really upset. That's a really good place to look. The, the other hack is, do you, do you, do you, I mean, do you have a single person that's actually a salesperson on the team? Truly a sales. You probably have customer support I mean, and <laughs> happiness officers and anti-sadness officer, but do you have an actual salesperson? We, we built it from scratch, and um, we built it the way we thought it should work. Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, we're working on it. I don't know how to call our sales dash support team, but they're sales dash support. Dash. My, my only point is, is that um, a, a lot of people don't want to hire a salesperson early, right? They want a happiness officer. Well, people just can come in and buy it. What's that? People they just should. come in and buy it. But if you can get someone pretty good early day, it is usually going to be a, you know, an evangelist, a generalist, or whatever. If that, pers that person will talk and listen to that customer in a different fashion than a reactive person, right? They'll be proactive. And, and what I did in the beginning for the comp plan for our first rep is I paid them 100% of every dollar that came in. That was, that's the only plan I could come up with in my mind, right? Every dollar, because I figured it was accretive, because I'm like you, right? It, it just, I, I couldn't even make the math work in my head. I wasn't sure you could close enough business to, to pay the rent, but I just said, I will pay you 100% of the first year value of every customer you can close. And that gave him enough leeway to spend an inordinate amount of time with these, you know, he could close a $50 a month customer, or even 20, because it was enough, because he got to keep that whole 600 bucks, right? And so if you hack that and hire that right person early, you may learn totally different ways about how to monetize these customers. Yeah, and uh, the other question I got is, um, say in that kind of stage, how would you go about, um, first of all, growing your team, and secondly, like fundraising, is it necessary? Do you want to raise money? No. No, nah, I wouldn't. I would, I'm I would, if you can raise money in AngelList, at a preposterous valuation, I would do it tonight. AngelList is a gift if it works for you. All right, guys. So, so we're done. But the simple answer is, and the real answer to fundraising for a, for a, for a SaaS product or B2B is, you have, if you don't, you don't require capital, you're not going bankrupt tomorrow, right? So what you really want to do, and let's step back for a minute, you want to see if there's a force multiplier here, okay? Because there is such a huge, let's, you know, we talked about Viva earlier today and others. Look at the premium for massive success, right? So if you can put a little bit of capital into this business and grow it faster, in today's world with what, you know, recurring revenue multiples are, 
it's like, it's like, it's like ultra creative, right? If you can go from being a company growing 100% a year in SaaS to one growing 150% a year, at, at even at past a few million in revenue, all of a sudden you go from, you know, barely interesting to like incredibly hot, right? So, um, so that's the re if you don't need capital, that's the reason to think about it, right? If it can inflect it, then today's go for it today. Well, hey, Makita, thanks very much. Makita, right? Yeah. Sorry, and it's quote yeah. roller. Good to see you again. Thanks for being Thank a guinea pig up here.